Hello, a very warm welcome to you from STT University. I am Aditi Agarwal from Faculty of Mass Communication and Media Technology. Today we will learn anchoring during election and budget presentation. Let's start with anchoring during election. The anchor during election should be someone who is a seasoned journalist and have good knowledge of electoral process and politics. The anchor should have knowledge of following things. Political system. Difference between Lok Sabha election and Vidhan Sabha election. How much seats are there in the constituency? What happens in case of hung assembly or hung parliament? Background of political parties and political leaders. Major issues that affect voters. Model code of conduct during elections. Special rules apply when reporting political matters during an election or referendum period. These rules are designed to ensure one party or candidate does not get an advantage over the others and exist in addition to the general rules concerning impartiality. As special restrictions apply during an election period, program makers must seek legal advice at the earliest opportunity. It is important to remember that the major parties must be given due weight in coverage during an election period and no candidate should be given an unfair advantage. On polling day, discussion of election issues should cease. Press Council of India's Guidelines on Election Reporting 1996 It will be the duty of the press to give objective reports about elections and the candidates. The newspapers are not expected to indulge in unhealthy election campaigns, exaggerated reports about any candidate or party or incident during the elections. Election campaign along communal or caste lines is banned under the election rules. Hence, the press should issue reports which tend to promote feelings of enmity or hatred between people on the ground of religion, race, caste, community or language. The press should refrain from publishing false or critical statements in regard to the personal character and conduct of any candidate or in relation to the candidature or withdrawal of any candidate or his candidature to prejudice the prospects of that candidate in the elections. The press shall not publish unverified allegations against any candidate or party. The press shall not accept any kind of inducement, financial or otherwise, to project a candidate or party. It shall not accept hospitality or other facilities offered to them by or on behalf of any candidate or party. The press is not expected to indulge in canvassing of a particular candidate or party. If it does, it shall allow the right of reply to the other candidate or party. Guidelines on Pre-Poll and Exit Poll Survey 1996 The newspapers or news channels should not allow their forum to be used for distortions and manipulations of the elections and should not allow themselves to be exploited by the interested parties. Further, in the event of staggered poll dates, the media is seen to carry exit poll surveys of the polls already held. This is likely to influence the voters where the polling is yet to commence, with a view to ensure that the electoral process is kept pure and the voters' minds are not influenced by any external factors it is necessary that the media does not publish the exit poll surveys till the last poll is held. Model Code of Conduct Model Code of Conduct is set of guidelines issued by the Election Commission of India for conduct of political parties and candidates during elections. Its main purpose is to ensure that ruling parties at the centre and in the states do not misuse their position of advantage to gain an unfair edge. It is designed to avert practices which are deemed corrupt under model code of conduct. For example, 
politicians should not make hate speeches putting one community against another or make promises about new projects that may sway a voter the model code of conduct comes into force immediately after announcement of election by election commission now let's know what are the main highlights of this model code of conduct the government may not lay any new ground for projects or public initiatives once the model code of conduct comes into force government bodies are not to participate in any recruitment process during the electoral process the contesting candidates and their campaigners must respect the home life of their rivals and should not disturb them by holding road shows or demonstrations in front of their houses the court tells the candidates to keep it away the election campaign rallies and road shows must not hinder the road traffic candidates are asked to refrain from distributing liquor to voters it is a widely known fact in india that during election campaigning liquor may be distributed to the voters the election code in force hinders the government or ruling party leaders from launching new welfare programs like construction of roads provision of drinking water facilities etc or any other ribbon cutting ceremonies the court instructs that public spaces like meeting grounds helipads government guest houses and bungalows should be equally shared among the contesting candidates these public spaces should not be monopolized by a few candidates on polling day all party candidates should cooperate with the poll duty officials at the voting booths for an orderly voting process candidates should not display their election symbols near and around the poll booths on the polling day no one should enter the booths without a valid pass from the election commission there will be a poll observers to whom any complaints can be reported or submitted the ruling party ministers should not make any ad hoc appointments of officials which may influence the voters to vote in favor of the party in power before using loud speakers during their poll campaigning candidates and political parties must obtain permission or license from the local authorities the candidates should inform the local police for conducting election rallies to enable the police authorities to make required security arrangements while anchoring during elections we need to understand that election reporting is not only about covering political rallies or asking people who is their favorite politicians but it is also about analyzing the real issues of voters what are the challenges and struggles that the voters are facing and investigating whether the promises made by politicians in earlier elections got fulfilled or not it is more about research and less about commentary so that was all about anchoring during election now let's talk about anchoring during budget presentation we need to keep following things in mind while anchoring during budget presentation break out of the mindset that a budget is a dry collection of numbers that you report on a couple of times during the financial season remember that it is a document that charts your nation's plan for the coming year and reflect the political values of the people who put it together look for stories you can do before the budget is released For example, you can analyze the budgets from the past 5 or 10 years and discover trends that are important to readers or your audience. Put your budget day stories into context by telling readers whether taxes will go up and by how much. Make budget day stories meaningful for readers or audience by telling them what services they are going to be getting or losing. Find out who are the winners and losers make cheaper or expensive chart reduce clutter in your stories by taking some of your numbers out and putting them into graphics 
pick one interesting or unusual part of the budget and write about it sometime during the budget cycle. Tell readers or viewers something they didn't know before. Translate complex numbers into understandable language and graphics. Provide political and economic context. Analyze different aspects of the budget. So today we learned about anchoring during election and budget presentation. The next time we meet, we will learn new trends and areas in reporting. Keep learning, keep growing. See you next time.